we've got this nice mathematical blob here, this expression. It's not an equation. You can't solve it. It's just some stuff with X's in. And what we're going to do is think of it like Play-Doh. We're going to pull it apart and squish it and make it look different. So it's the same thing, but it's going to look different. And it's going to look like this, number X power plus number X power. Now, why do we want to do that? Because probably the thing that we would be most interested in with this guy here is how it changes as X changes. And rates of change is all about calculus. Calculus is what allows us to investigate rates of change. And to do the calculus, to do the differentiation and the integration, we need this form. So that's why we're doing it. And that's when you will find that you need to do this is in your, if you're in a situation where you need to differentiate or integrate. We're going to be using nearly all of these rules down here. So let's number them so that we can reference them. Okay, starting off with the question in the form that it's written. First thing we're going to do is we're going to split the fraction into two different parts. And this is going to be using the V, which is number 10 down here. And the reason I call it a V method is that the left hand side looks like a V. And what we're doing is we're taking something that looks like this um, with two things on the top, one thing on the bottom, and we're pulling it apart like this into two separate fractions. The bottom stays the same for both parts. So we've got A is over C and B is over C. So the 4 root x is over 3 root 2 x squared. Then there's a minus, that's what's separating these two parts of the top. And then there's a 1, which is also over 3 root 2 x squared. And if you think about it backwards, how would I add these two up? I'd make the bottoms the same, the bottoms are the same, then I'd add the tops. So the bottom would stay the same, then I'd add the tops. So it's the same. So this is using rule 10. Okay. Now, what about, what do we need to do next? So this looks a bit more like this, but we need to separate out these numbers and X's. And for that, we're going to use sliding, which is this thing down here, which is where you sort of take this mesh of numbers and X's and powers here, and you slide the numbers over to the left and you slide the X's over to the right so that they sit separately and you have a number and an X and a power. So this is what it looks like. Set up two fractions. Have a look on the top, slide any numbers over to the left and any X's over to the right. Have a look at the bottom, slide any numbers to the left and any X's to the right. Same thing again. Have a look on the top. Well, we've just got one, so that's a number, but we need something on the top of this. One times one is one, that makes sense. On the bottom, slide the numbers over to the left, slide the X's over to the right. So what we've been doing there is using number 11, sliding, sliding the numbers and sliding the X's. Really, really important rule. Really useful rule. Okay, next step is we are going to use the rules of indices. Because at the moment, we don't have x to the power. We have something that looks like that, something that looks like that. So what do we need to use here? This rule. We've got a fraction. We've got some on the top and some on the bottom. And that's going to equal the amount on the top minus the amount on the bottom. Rule three. But we're also going to need to deal with this square root. So the square root, this is a little in invisible two on the square root, which we write as x to the half. So this is using rule five as well. Half minus two. Okay, here we've got one over x to the power of two, which is written x to the power of minus two. So this is using rule four. Next job is, we're nearly done, rationalize the denominators. And what that means is rationalize is to make rational and rational numbers can be written as fractions. Root two cannot be written as a fraction. So that is not a rational number. So we don't want it on the denominator. And the way that we're going to rationalize that denominator is using rule eight, because we've got the situation where we've just got a little blob on the bottom, not two things added up. And so if we multiply the top and the bottom by that third, we're going to rationalize the denominator, which is what we want. So multiply top and bottom. Now, a little warning here, this is our warning box, is that numbers tend to be quite evil. Um, so 
all of this A-level maths is all fine, but then we come to do a half minus two, all goes out the window. So let's not risk anything here. Let's do a half minus two on the calculator. Okay, what are we doing? Rationalizing the denominator. Multiplying by root two on the top and the bottom. And that's using, what, what have I just used? Rule eight. On both terms, I've used rule eight there. Okay, nearly, nearly done. I just want to tidy this up a little bit and see what I'm dealing with. So just do tidy up. We've got four root two over three times two is six. And then we've got root two over three times two is six. Good, right. Very, very last thing that we need to do is to separate, just like we separated the numbers and the x's using sliding, we can now separate out the rational numbers, so ones that can be written as a fraction, with the thirds. Rational numbers sliding to the left, thirds sliding to the right. Here's our sliding method. So our numbers slide to the left, and our thirds slide to the right. Put a one in if necessary, four root two on the top. Yep, six times one is six, yep. Slide those numbers to the left, slide the thirds to the right. And now we can write our final answer. Four over six simplifies to two thirds. We've got root two divided by one, which is root two, x to the minus three over two, minus a sixth root two, x to the minus two. Now, what have we used here? We've used sliding again, which is 11. We use that on both terms. And then this is just tidying up. Now, how are we gonna check this answer? So we've done this, we think we're right, we hope we're right. We can check by subbing in an X to the before and the after. So I think that is identical to that. I think they're the same. I don't think I've gone wrong. Let's check. Let's write this in our calculator with a randomly chosen value of x. I'm gonna use 2.5, um, you can use whatever you like, and then see what that is. That is 2.5 squared, comes out, oops, comes out to be nothing. What's wrong with that? Didn't put a times in, that's what's wrong. There we go. Okay, so this is, let's make a little note, 0.2008015559. Okay. What happens if I put that same x in here? Obviously, it should come out the same. Let's try. So we've got two thirds, and this takes two seconds. It's a really, really good, easy way to check. Oh, I need a times in there, don't I, like before? Okay, fingers crossed. <laughs> times. Yay! Exactly the same. So we are sure that this is the same as this and we've got it right. Now just very quickly before we finish this, some warnings. Um, your brain will be really nice to you and make up some extra rules, which aren't true. So your brain will go, wait a minute, the square root of a product is the individual products square rooted. The square root of a fraction is the individual parts of the fraction square rooted. So the square root of a sum must be the individual parts of the sum square rooted. No, that is not true. So for example, think of A is 16 and B is 9. If you work out what that is and work out what those are, you will see that they are not the same. This doesn't work. But your brain will try to tell you that this does work, which is a sensible, you know, pattern spotting for the brain. But sadly, no, not true. There's another one down here that the brain says, well, if the V works, A is over C and B is over C, then it must work upside down. A over B plus C must be the same as A over B plus A over C. No, not true. If you want to think of an example, put A is one, B is one, C is one. Okay, then you're gonna get on the bottom here, a half, and then here you're gonna get one, and here you're gonna get one. And a half is not the same as two. And there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, this is a very, very common mistake, is to say that one over four X is four X to the minus one. Now, it kind of is four X to the minus one, but it isn't 
4x to the minus 1. What this is, using the sliding, if you slide those numbers and slide those x's, is a quarter 1 over x, not 4, no. And the mistake that's happened here is the invisible brackets. 4x is all to the minus 1. 4x to the minus 1 is not 4x to the minus 1. And you'll hear me say that a lot. 2x squared is not 2x squared. 2x brackets squared is not 2x squared. So this use of brackets is really, really important in maths.